Hello, today I want to introduce QDX, the new QRP Labs digital transceiver. Here is QDX and you can see it's a very small extruded aluminium enclosure and it has a single status LED here on the front and on the rear panel it has three connectors, USB, DC and an RF connector. Well, we've had an office move and as you can see uh, the girls have mostly got themselves sorted out quite nicely, um, but when it comes to the QRP labs, it's pure chaos. So we'll find, uh, I'll probably be quite brief in my explanation and a not very well polished video. So here's the inside the QDX, uh, that you can see there's a single PCB, everything is PCB mounted. Um, there's all the embedded SDR processor and the synthesizer, the analog to digital converter and all of other components are on the ver reverse side of the board. There are a TCXO module here, this is the same TCXO used in the QCX Plus and the QCX series. There's a four transistor push-pull power amplifier here which was developed especially for this radio and it produces about 5 watts of power output at only 9 volts supply. There are 4 BS170s that are pressed flat against the board as heat sink by this nut and washer here. This is the trifilar uh, input transformer for the receiver and the receiver bandpass filter here and these six toys here are the output low pass filtering. Here is the underside of the board and you can see the voltage regulators here, the main ARM32 32-bit 32 ARM M4 Cortex processor here, um, op-amp, SI5351A synthesizer, the ADC chip here and of course the status LED here. The key point about the digital signal is it's not actually a single sideband transmission and while single sideband transceivers are normally used for modulating uh, digital signals to sideband is not a requirement and it's not even the best way to do it. So what we do in QDX, we take an audio signal such as this example sine wave here and the audio signal consists of a series of samples and those samples can be precisely inter inter interpolated to determine the exact timing of the zero crossing. From that you can find the period of the sine wave and take the reciprocal, reciprocal to find the frequency. If we know we have a 1500 Hz sine wave from WSJTX or whatever PC software is producing the audio tones, we can then add that to the USB dial frequency in WSJTX and command the SI5351A to produce exactly that frequency. So the distance between samples here is precisely known as it's 1 over 48,000 because we're using a 48,000 samples per second sound card and ADC chip. Since the QDX includes its own built-in USB sound card, a very high performance 24-bit uh, 110 dB dynamic range sound card, we, that's used on receive to get the audio information from the QDX to the uh, PC for WSJTX, but on transmit we get a perfect set of samples from WSJTX as a stream of digital numbers with no loss and with no uh, noise, just a perfect transmission from the PC to the QDX. So it's a very nice benefit of having a built-in USB sound card. And so we can determine actually this zero crossing point by doing a linear interpolation between the points either side of it with a very, very high precision. And what we find out actually in practice is that the at 1,500 hertz, for example, I can determine from a single cycle measurement the frequency to a resolution of about 0 0.05 hertz. So it's very, very precise. And because of that, because it's a pure uh, RF signal, not it doesn't require a linear amplifier or modulator or power amplifier and so we're able to make a very simple transmitter which also has very very high performance. It consists just of two pairs of BS170 in parallel which are driven with a 180 degree phase shifted signal and then combined in an output transformer. Because it's a push-pull push amplifier 
the, the even harmonics cancel out and that greatly reduces the demands on the low pass filtering and it's also uh, very efficient. So it's a really nice and simple way of implementing a power amplifier for a pure signal such as this. It also has zero unwanted sideband transmission, zero residual carrier, as well as uh, no problems with intermodulation distortion due to non-linearities in the power amplifier. So there are a lot of uh, fun tools in QDX, and if you connect a terminal emulator to QDX, because it includes its own built-in uh, virtual COM port for serial control, and that's what WSJTX uses for CAT commands to control QDX. So in QDX, audio and serial data go over the same USB cable. Now, in this uh, configuration screen, you can actually set things up like the TCS low frequency if you want to make it more precise, and you can choose the uh, sideband of operation, USB or LSB, normally for digital modes you use USB. You can set up a default frequency, you can set the audio gain, and um, the Vox operation is possible. Um, I leave that disabled by default, and that's recommended, because otherwise you get PC sounds, like uh, you know a WhatsApp message arrives or something, and it uh, starts being transmitted by QDX if you have Vox switched on, and if you haven't set up your audio settings properly. These last five are all to do with how the analysis of the audio cycle is performed, um, but practically speaking, you can just leave them at the default. And then there's an audio frequency uh, sweep where the internal signal, signal generator, and you can see the percentage completion here at the bottom right, the internal signal generator is actually sweeping through uh, a three kilohertz section of band. And it shows you here the um, audio response of the upper sideband. So it shows quite a sharp cutoff at 150 hertz here and at 3.2 kilohertz here and a very flat passband in the middle. And then this one here at about 60 dB down, this is the unwanted sideband cancellation. And then you can run that if you click uh, minus or plus, you can run it for different bands as well. Then there's a similar tool for the RF filter sweep that will sweep through uh, the radio frequency response and um, it shows here this particular unit does need some adjustment. Um, I have some final turns count optimization to do on the bandpass filtering. But it's um, a nice tool. You see that goes from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 megahertz and with the blue line here indicating the middle of the 40 meter band. One of, the, one of the coolest applications here is the input analysis screen, which is kind of like a waterfall. And you can see that if I have it connected up to WSJTX and I click on the tune button on WSJTX, then it starts showing this uh, 1500 hertz tone here. And then it shows at the top right hand corner um, what that is being decoded as. You can see it's being decoded as 1500.000 hertz, so it's unbelievably accurate, the uh, tone uh, establishment. That then is added, as I said, to the RF frequency and transmitted by the SI5351A and the amplifier chain. Now I've enabled in WSJTX a CQ uh, from FT8 mode, and you'll see what happens when it starts transmitting. It's decoding all the individual tones and showing them on the waterfall as they scroll up. Now the, frequent, the scroll rate up here is 160 milliseconds because that's the tone duration for WSJTX uh, in FT8 mode. And then the width of the screen here is 160 hertz. That can also be adjusted using the left and right and arrow keys. If I select the application. So I can actually zoom in into a finer resolution, or I can zoom out to a narrower band. And I can also speed up the decoding and slow it down. So and I can use different scroll rates, which are suitable for Whisper or for JT9 or different modes. Now the next one is a cat command testing screen and in here you can type a cat command 
in the bottom part of the screen here the FA command that returns VFO A and you can test out various cat commands. The list of supported cat commands is defined in the manual but this can be useful for testing purposes and it's much more convenient to type in your cat commands here in the bottom uh, yellow area here and be able to edit them before transmitting them to the device than it is just using a basic terminal emulator. There's also a log file. At the moment the log file here is empty but you can switch on the log file and it will log any uh, errors, any cat messages which are not being understood properly and so that can be useful for debugging purposes too. Then there's a factory reset. If we do a factory reset, it will put the unit back to its default state. So if you get into a mess with the configuration parameters, you can do that. And finally, there's the firmware update. Um, when you do the firmware update, what you will find is that the QDX, um, the screen disappears and it will pop up here as a window, a file manager window on my PC. And it will contain uh, two files. One is the EEPROM and one is the QDX firmware. Updating the firmware is simply a matter of copying in the new file and it, the QDX will update itself. So it's very nice, no operating system dependencies, no drivers needed, no special software and no hardware such as uh, programmers. And as you can see here on the QDX there are no uh, relays for transmit receive switching, there are no plug-in bands. Uh, band modules for different bands. The uh, all the everything's installed on the board, and it's using pin diode switching for the band switching, as well as solid state switching for transmit receive. QDX will be available as a kit, priced sixty dollars, from Monday the eleventh of October two thousand and twenty-one at eighteen hundred Zulu hours. The optional enclosure is an extra twenty dollars. Uh, they do go very very nicely together. So that's the end of this brief video on QDX. Hopefully next time I'll be able to uh, get the boxes unpacked and uh, find a little bit more to be able to do a, a more professional video.